Hey there, I'm Sven Masterson, one of the co-founders of Mentoring Men. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about something that we routinely hear from men as they're going through a process of personal transformation, usually as the result of encountering significant marital or relationship stress that ultimately breaks or begins to break the relationship that they have with a partner. We work with these men really to help them overcome themselves. Um, most men reach out to us because they're in immense pain because maybe they're facing divorce or separation. Perhaps their partner just told them, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore, or I need space, or I want a divorce, or I'm having an affair. For all these reasons, men reach out to us, and our focus with them is actually not on fixing the relationship, but on helping that man restore a sense of well-being within himself and wholeness and to learn really how to discover his truest and most deepest and mature self. And in that process, one of the things that happens is a man realizes just how much a, a dependency he had placed on that partner to make him feel well, how much of his very sense of self and worth and value and identity he had been deriving from his partner. Now that might look cute in movies, right? Like Jerry Maguire, You Complete Me. That might have some sort of appeal in, 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 in a movie or a story. It might feel romantic, but long-term, it actually becomes the basis for holding each other with a lot of contempt and resentment and anger and frustration. Because when we depend upon a person and we don't feel like they're providing for us the thing that we want or need, we start to get hostile. We start to feel hard feelings. And so the process we take men through actually helps to untangle all that stuff to, to, to help a man learn just how much he had childishly and immaturely sought his partner to be his everything and how that man lost his own sense of self and unfairly put the woman in his life in the position of having to be the provider of these things that he wants and needs in his life, things that he used to as a child or even a young man, he used to know how to self-source, he used to know how to feel good in the world without somebody giving that to him. And you know, one of the things that happens in this process is a man comes to the place where he says, I'm not even sure I want this anymore. I don't know if I want to reconcile. Because reconciliation is often something that starts to naturally happen when men feel restored and whole in themselves, when they stop feeling needy and clingy and desperate and insecure and they feel whole and secure and confident and calm, it tends to have the the outcome that it starts to reattract the the other partner and it starts to to offer the opportunity to reconcile. But it's at this moment this man is oftentimes saying, you know, I'm not sure if I want this. And it could be very confusing for that man because when he first reached out, that's all he wanted. That's all he knew. He couldn't actually think about anything else. He couldn't stop thinking about the loss of his marriage and family and just the big picture that the, the, the life he had been working for for decades. And so now he finds himself in this new problem. I'm not sure if I want this anymore. And so if that's you or if you're familiar with this feeling, I want to just give you some encouragement. This is super, super normal. It's also a very, very healthy sign. You see, when we have this needy, a dependency-based expectation that someone else serve something in our lives. We're, we're fundamentally controlling and manipulative of that person. We're doing everything we can to make sure they keep giving us the goods. And that's a horrible basis for a relationship because it puts that person in that unfair position. And so, but that's, that's what we do. That's how we live. And we're foolish enough to call this love. When in reality, we have a, just a dependency on another person and we treat them like an addict treats the vice that they have an addiction for. They love it, right? They need it. And what men find is when that addiction is broken, when they no longer need uh, those things from that person, they don't, they don't know what else they should think or feel. They've never been in that position before. They've always had this dependency on that person to give them these things. And when a man starts to self-source those things, he finds, wow, I don't, I don't have a need here anymore. And he doesn't know what that's like. And so it feels like, I don't know if I love this person anymore. 
Well, gentlemen, I would challenge that what you're actually experiencing for the first time in your life is the blank canvas that can come without being infatuated with somebody. Because the need to receive something is not the best or even the most sustainable and satisfying form of love. That love we feel in the beginning, this neediness, attraction, I need to get something from her, is what the Greeks called eros. And it's a dependency-based love. It has a very short lifespan in the long run. And the better love that can come in this place now that the slate is clean, when a man stops having this dependency, is called the agape, is what the Greeks called agape. It's a, it's a love that is sourced within. It's a, it's a love that has no object. And so the, the love comes out of us towards another person, not based on anything that they do. It's not based on their behavior. And it's not to achieve some outcome of receiving something. It's purely love flowing from our hearts towards other people. And it's a beautiful thing to experience because it's unconditional. It's non-transactional. But you know, there's this point where Eros has died. And that's a good thing, right? We don't understand this. If you haven't lived in a long-term relationship that's agape-based, it can look really scary to see, Aga to see Eros die because it can look like, well, that's it. There's nothing left. But that's just not true. And anybody who's in a long-term, deeply connected, intimate, um, satisfying relationship who, who has done so based on agape will tell you, no, it gets a hundredfold better when Eros dies and when agape starts to become the prominent kind of love because that is a love where each partner is able to truly and freely and generously give from themselves with no expectation of return or reciprocity. And that's scary. It's scary if you don't have a context for this or what it might look like um, to think about your relationship maturing in that way. But it's normal. And so just realize that this time in between when Eros has died and you're, you have to decide for yourself, um, do I want this? And this is a, a, a holy moment. It's an opportunity actually to get clear about your why. Why do I want this relationship? And now that all the, the need-based reasons are gone, now we can actually say, what do I want? What would I enjoy? Who do I love to be? How would I love to act towards this partner? How would I love to share with them? And you notice the switch is happening from what do they give me to what do I want to give to them? And this is really, really healthy in a relationship and leads to long-term connection and intimacy and satisfaction. Now, if you doubt me that this thing called agape is good, I want to ask you, if you're a parent, is this not how you love your kids? Do you love your kids transactionally? Do you, do you threaten to withhold your love if they don't meet some sort of dependency-based need? Or do you not know? Is it not natural as a parent to love your kids with an unconditional agape kind of love that says, you know what, sweetheart or son or daughter, I love you because I love you. I don't need to actually have your behavior be a certain way for me to keep loving you. That love is sourced in me, not sourced in your actions. And this same kind of love when it permeates a romantic relationship in the long term creates a, a really great and satisfying amount of connection. And you're going to have to just get used to this kind of emptiness that is there between Eros dying and until you learn to commit yourselves to the agape kind of love process. It's a scary time and uh, it can feel a little bit uncertain. And so if this is resonating with you and you, you find yourself saying, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I still want this. I want to encourage you to do two things. One, hang in there and just take one day at a time. And then two, I want to encourage you to reach out and get in touch with me. Let's have a session about it, a, a complimentary one-on-one -on -one session. I'll talk to you about what's going on, unfold some of these things a little bit more deeply and uh, see if we can't get you some hope and encouragement for what you need to keep going. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you in another video. Take care.